Thank you for listening to our presentation looking at robotic assisted bladder diverticulectomy, a safe alternative to open approach. Open and laparoscopic bladder diverticulectomy are established treatment options for symptomatic bladder diverticulum. However, there are very few robotically assisted bladder diverticulectomy reports. We wanted to look at our data at our tertiary centre, looking at surgical and functional outcomes, but also quality of life, something that hasn't been reported before. We did this by looking at all of our patients who underwent a robotically assisted bladder diverticulectomy between 2015 and 2020. The data collected was prospective and this included patient demographics, the operative parameters, diverticular information which was collected looking at their imaging, quality of life using validated questionnaires and also their functional outcomes. Looking at the results, we can see we had 14 patients between 2015 and 2020. All patients were male and the average age was 61 years old. The average follow-up time was two years from a range of one month to just over four and a half years. Looking at bladder outflow obstruction surgery with our cohort, we see that one of our patients had a Millens procedure during their diverticulectomy operation. Three of our patients had pre-diverticulectomy TURPs and one patient is considering a urolift postoperatively. Now looking at our diverticular dimensions, we can see that on average, the thickest measurement of detrusal wall on average was seven millimeters. The average neck diameter of the diverticular was eight millimeters, volume of 686 cubic centimeters. And interestingly, the mean prostate volume was only 49 cubic centimeters. Now our operative and functional results, we can see the mean operative time was 178 minutes. This included both prep time and consult time. The mean hospital stay was two days and the mean estimated blood loss was 111 mils. Unfortunately, some of our patients did have complications. One of our patients had a hematoma and needed a laparotomy. One had an electively repaired port site hernia. Two patients had urine leaks and one had a UTI, all were managed conservatively. Looking at our functional outcomes, we can see that there was a reduction initially in catheter dependency. And we can see also that our suprapubic catheter dependent patient pre-op was subsequently not using any catheters postoperatively. There was also a reduction in those who had recurrent UTIs and also a reduction in average post-void residuals. Now looking at quality of life, we can see from the IPSS scores that the pre-op to post-op scores had reduced from 21 plus 7 to 5 plus 2, indicating an overall improvement in quality of life. In addition, we also use a simple Likert score from minus three, which was very unsatisfied with the procedure and their outcomes, to plus three, which is very satisfied. And we had an average score of two and a half, which indicated a moderate to good satisfaction with their procedure. In conclusion, we can say that robotically assisted bladder diverticulectomy is a feasible treatment option for bladder diverticular. It can offer the advantages of minimally invasive surgery whilst improving functional outcomes and improving quality of life. This is the second largest reported study to date. However, larger study numbers are needed and longer follow up time is required to identify prognostic indication and information. Thank you for your time.